Welcome back to Track Talk. We're going to be doing something a little bit different with this video. I've actually gone ahead and recorded a game that I played myself and will be showing you my thoughts in real time. Uh, unfortunately, the auction was not recorded in real time, so I will be just talking over the auction in retrospect. But the rest of the game after the auction, uh, you will be able to hear my reactions as they uh, occur. JJB starts the auction with a bid on the Mohawk and Hudson. Boy will be leaping on the Camden and Amboy, and I will be rounding us out with a bid on the Delaware and Hudson. Irwin actually joins Boy on the Camden and Amboy, and then JJB will be uh, opening up the Champlain and St. Lawrence. So there is an option for an early pull here um, and allow several of these privates to go for near face. However, Boy, as a result of uh, Irwin's bid on the Camden and Amboy, is basically the least incentivized to allow that to occur, and as a result, will bid on the DNH with me. Uh, I now have the option of joining on the Champlain and St. Lawrence, or the Mohawk and Hudson, it, assuming I don't want to be the third player on a private, and I chose to go on the Mohawk and Hudson. This is not a great position, but I, it's one that I oftentimes find myself in. Uh, the danger here is that you uh, can win both of these privates and be forced to uh, leave the auction with very little starting cash. Um, I do want to be sure to price and force on the Mohawk and Hudson, uh, but if I go too high, I can put myself in a dangerous position. I could also have passed here, and in retrospect, maybe that would have been the stronger play. Uh, Irwin, for some reason, bids on the B and O. Um, I did not talk to him about this decision, so I don't know why he um, made it. It is an unusual decision, and usually players are trying to avoid the B&O, but he chooses to bid on it. He is also on the CNA, so if he were to win both of these privates, he would have basically no cash uh, going to stock round one. After the bid on the B&O, JJB just polls. Um, so he will be on the Mohawk and Hudson with me and has won the Schuylkill. So I guess once you see that the B&O has a bidder on it, you know, the incentive to position yourself well in the auction has kind of decreased. So he was comfortable pulling there. He also got a uh, face value Champlain at St. Lawrence with that poll. So we will now go to the first contested private, and we will see um, the bidding for that. I am rather incentivized to win the DNH. I think it's a fairly good private, and I do not want to um, be forced to bid for a lot of money on the M&H. So Boy, um, on the other hand, has no um, incentive to really bid this up as he has the potential of getting the CNA fairly cheap as Irwin has put himself on the B&O. And I will end up taking it for 95 and I'm now in the position to price and force on the Mohawk and Hudson. So I want to bid this player up as high as I can without uh, actually winning, which is uh, what I eventually do, and he will win it for 155 which is um, on the cheaper side but not so cheap that I felt like I had uh, not price enforced adequately. Camden Amboy goes up. Again, Irwin is in a real rough spot here with respect to price enforcing. If he goes too high, Boy could let him have it, and then he will have spent, you know, probably around $400 on privates, which is a very hard position to have much game, game impact from. So this goes uh, for very cheap at 205 to Boy, and uh, Irwin will be left to par the B&O. It's at this point that uh, I began recording my audio in real time, so I will transition to that audio now. I hope you enjoy the video. And Irwin working on parring the B&O does do it for Max. Unfortunately, Boy was able to leave the auction um, with the Camden Amboy and Priority. Um, the bid for the Camden Amboy went pretty low. Uh, at only 205, which I think is a big mistake, but that's what happens when you bid on the B&O. So um, hopefully this player is learning why you don't do that. Um, priority now comes to me, and I will be taking the C&O. Um, don't anticipate we'll be seeing the B&O floating, so hopefully I can race down to Lancaster. Uh, I'll be parring low in an effort to go after um, these other companies, and hopefully just be able to sit on, you know, my private revenue and seventy dollars of income until uh, I'm able to buy in my private. Erwin passing, JJB, maybe looking at helping the B and O float, which I'd 
I mean, I guess from a CNO perspective, in terms of trying to get to Lancaster, I'd prefer not to see. But in terms of long term hurting Irwin and taking away that private is not unreasonable. He can't just sit on his uh, private revenue here and hope to float the NYNH in the next stock round, which we may see. So he does decide to go for the BNO, so we will be seeing that float, and I will just continue to float the CNO. JJB seems to be spreading his money around after ensuring that the BNO would float, and I will continue floating my own company. JJB may be buying a share, um, which I'll be happy to let him do. Um, I'll just sit on my cash and then invest it later, hoping for an early um, private buy-in. I also have the option of using the DNH, so even if I'm blocked out of Lancaster by the BNO and the PRR, we'll have some options available. So he does take that share and floats my company. So I will be happy to pass here and we'll see if Boy is also just going to be willing to pass here. He buys a CNO as he is anticipating me running for the most, which I probably will be. So if everybody else passes, um, I will have priority into the next stock round. I'm not really confident that Irwin is going to continue to pass, so I may as well just probably buy a share here because I think I'm going to be going second to last no matter what I do. Irwin does pass, unfortunately, so I've given him priority. He may be looking to dump the B&O, um, but again, if the B&O is doing bad, uh, all the better for me as the CNO player, so um, maybe that's fine to have happen. If he's looking to dump, I expect he'll be building down south on Washington, tokening, and then buying four two trains or maybe three two trains. Um, so we'll see if he wants to do that. He does go south. That doesn't necessarily indicate just yet. If we see a token and four trains, then I'm pretty confident we'll see a dump doesn't token and is buying he's kind of thinking here he, he's tempted to try and do a dump or try and get greedy if he buys three uh, two trains here I will have the ability to just buy in my privates so it doesn't do that looks like he'll probably be um, laying east next OR and then uh, running his two trains PRR rushing over to Lancaster and should only be buying one train here, which it does. I will be heading towards Chicago, and I will buy just one train. I could buy into the threes here, um, but I won't have enough money to float without significantly selling down. So I may be happy to just sit now that the B&O uh, player doesn't have private revenue. I'll just sit on this and... Um, hopefully be able to end up with a little better priority um, position. Erwin kind of thinking about what he wants to do here. Could sell out of the B&O, but he really hasn't trashed it very effectively, so would it really wouldn't hurt JJB to do that. Would give him the option of just buying in all of his privates pretty much right away. Um, so it looks like he's just going to buy one of my shares. It's only one share left. JJB could snap that up. Alternatively, could sell out of everything and start floating his own. I think he would still have enough money to do that. But I would love for him to buy a share and then everybody else to pass um, so that I would be going second in priority instead of last. If he does that, I'll definitely buy in my privates and then uh, and then sell down. So he's just tanking shares here a little bit. Not really the end of the world. I'm happy to be in yellow, happy to have market shares. And um, the fact that he has sold my shares leads me to believe that he is going to be buying some other people's shares. So I do anticipate going second in priority into stock round three. I'm not really interested in buying a PRR share that's going to run for 30. And I anticipate some other stock trashing potentially. Um, so we'll see. Erwin may be looking at my market shares here. He can't buy one safely. I won't be able to dump it on him. Instead, going to buy his own share. We'll see if JJB continues to buy shares here. 
kind of strange that he tanked my company of all of them, as those shares are going to be paying the most. But I'm happy to go second. Erwin probably just sitting on his shares here. I expect we'll see him pass. So Boy may also be able to buy in his private here. Um, he hopefully will be having to buy the two and the three first, um, unless Erwin does something silly, um, which will hurt him a little bit. Uh, the CNA is going to deplete his PRR company of a lot of money. So I would love to see him buy the other two and then into the three. And then I'll just be able to snap up a quick three, buy in my private, still have some company cash, and start a second company with just a few stock sales. Erwin giving this a lot of thought, either that or just stepped away from the computer. JJB, is he going to sell out of this company? He will be hurting his own net worth if he does. Um, he bought some of these IPO shares. I'm so happy. Uh, I don't think that was great play out of JJB. I'm happy, you know, to have gotten a little bit of a break on priority and don't really care about my share worth, share value at this point. So Erwin, it did lay that token now. If he was going to do that, I would have liked to have seen him buy the third train. He will be operating ahead of JGB. He could see a dump here. I thought I turned chat off. I guess it came back on when I left the left the game to check their LOs. I never understand the complaint about auto routing. It's like, what are you thinking about here? There's no <laughs> there's no question about what the good routes are. Um, so I never understand that complaint. Question is, will he buy these two trains to dump? Um, while it's appealing to dump a company on someone, that's, you know, get that little adrenaline rush, uh, it will make it very easy for PRR and myself to buy on our privates. So maybe not the greatest idea. He does buy a third train, doesn't buy the fourth, so probably won't be um, dumping, but is putting himself in a dangerous position because there's going to be two companies floating in the next stock round as a, vault, as a result of these private buy-ins. So it is not at all infeasible that we will see the B&O unable to run any of its trains and just falling back trainless if a four comes out first. But you got to imagine that uh, you know PRR is going to be floating, uh, his own company. The CNO, me, will be buying in a private and hoping to float something. And then the Parasite, uh, JJB, in B&O will probably be selling out and floating. So the B&O is going to be falling down on the market, operating late in priority. And there's going to be, you know, probably three companies operating ahead of it. So, I don't know. That's a rough spot. I will get my run into Chicago. I'll pay that out. Happy for those market shares. Thank you, JJB. Buy a three here. Question is, do I buy two threes? I don't need two threes, but I would love to see this train rush accelerate a little bit. So uh, if I buy this, I'll be down 320 from this. So I'll have $104. Um, yeah, let's do it. And now I expect we'll see Boy um, selling my share and probably floating for 600 something, maybe the NYNH. That does leave me in a rough spot um, because the NYC is, you know, my usual preferred company, but the NYNH is going to have the chance to be unfriendly. Um, it really just depends on how Boy wants to, you know, help or hurt. Because I imagine JJB will be floating as well here. Um, either that or Erwin will dump. So he does take the NYNH. He pars it pretty low. Could have sold shares to par it higher. So I think as a result of this, I may be using the Scranton to help the NYC out. Um, I'll give him, I'll start the NYC and give him the opportunity to um, cooperate with me, but I do have an out with this Delaware and Hudson. So if I sell two shares down, I'll have 134, which will bring me above 402. Uh, not entirely sure exactly what my par prices are going to be, 
but I will find that out here. So I par at 71, and then I'll sell a share down and be operating behind the NYNH. No, not quite. Yes, I will be. Okay, so let's do that. I would not have uh, been so eager to par the NYC there if I did not have the DNH. Um, the DNH is going to cost me uh, $120, so I may not be able to do it in the first operating round as I'm going to be a dollar short, which is pretty unfortunate, but uh, I will eventually be able to get over to the east side of the map. See, I imagine JB is going to be selling out of the BNO here. I'd like to see that. Um, if he doesn't, I'm going to be tempted to go on a rampage and just trash all these shares that these players are holding. He's buying a PRR, and he is going to start trashing some shares. Fair enough. So is he just going to sit in the B&O? That seems like a mistake. If I tank the B&O one slot, he will not have enough money to buy two of those shares. Um, he doesn't have enough money to buy two shares regardless because they're in the IPO. Um, so even if I drop the market price to 90, he would um, be short. Boy, is he going to do any stock trashing? I think I'm happy here to trash people's shares, try and operate earlier, and sacrifice priority um, to take advantage of my cash, my liquidity. Um, and just use that as kind of a, a cudgel to hurt these other players. What I don't want to happen is uh, to get so invested into a company that they're able to take my uh, newly floated NYC. So Boy is doing a little stock trashing. I think I'm happy to assist him in that. It does hurt the other two players, and uh, he is not going to get an advantage on me in terms of floating. So I'll probably be going last into the next stock round, and I'm fine with that. So we hurt Irwin um, net worth there, and JB nearly as invested as Irwin is, but he will be able to snap up a cheaper share as a result. But I'm happy to have JB buying these B&O shares rather than my, uh, you know, PR, uh, c and shares. I'd rather have them in the market, so hopefully we can entice him to buy those. I'd really like to see JG... JJB sell out here. Um, be, be nice to have the BNO operating behind us in priority so it falls back. Not sure why we're not seeing that. He hasn't passed here. He's debating selling out. Um, he should still... Well, I guess he wouldn't have money to float on his own. That's his own fault. I mean, he's he would have had money to float um, in stock round two if he had not played the way he has. It's interesting playing live games when there's long long pauses like this. I always assume that the other players, you know, mental gears are turning and that they are really debating this decision. In async, it's harder to get a feel for that because, you know, they could just be busy that day or whatever. Um, it's always possible that the player's just away from the keyboard or, you know, getting a phone call, that kind of thing. Um, but I imagine he is doing some mental math here and trying to figure out if there's any way he can get out of here and float his own company. So Boy is going to be floating his own company here. Um, so if I want to do some stock trashing, I don't really want to get fully invested in the NYC just yet. Um, looks like the NYNH is not going to be operating um, before the B&O, no matter what I can do here. So B&O is going to be getting its run of its two trains at least once. Um, I would like to eventually sell down the NYC one share and be able to um, invest in some paying companies. So I may be tempted to just pass here and let Boy uh, float and then start trashing shares. That way I don't buy the PRR and then not be able to um, have to sell it and then not be able to buy it back in the stock round. So I'm going to try passing here and see if Boy is willing to just continue floating without my assistance. Erwin just passed. And JB is buying one of my shares. Boy is continuing to float. 
So I will um, work on tanking the NYNH once he has done that. The only problem with tanking all of Boy's shares here is that it may make him a little uh, ornery and less likely to cooperate with the NYC, but I don't think I can count on his cooperation anyway, so I don't know that I'm losing that much by doing this. The nice part about someone parring at 67 is if you tank their shares, um, they can't just sell a share to make it hard for you to do it because they'll still be valued at 67. Um, so if he sells a share, he'll be at 67 and I can buy his IPO shares still without hurting my own net worth, which is a nice little feature. So he's floated now. Um, as a result, I will buy some of his shares, try and lock up his liquidity, put all his shares in the market. There is a chance that he tries to dump the NYNH on me. Um, and I would be, you know, then at risk of losing the NYC. That is, you know, a hit if I were to switch companies. Um, but at the end of the day, the NYNH is a pretty good company. So he's going to buy my CNO. He did do that maneuver where he puts a share in the market, so I'm happy to buy that, uh, not put over many shares of his into the market um, for him. And we will see if he tries to tank my, take my NYC here. If he dumps, I will not be able to defend the NYC very well, which would be an interesting decision. But then he's in the position that I'm in, where it's going to be running the risk of not having runs for the NYC for a while. JB watching this, not really sure what to make of it, I guess. We'll see, does he dump here? He doesn't. So I'll take one more share, and then I will sell him down. That will put him operating behind the CNO, which I think is nice. And nobody has money to buy those cheap shares. And from here out, I will basically just buy my own shares. And then I'll be looking to buy a share out of the PRR um, just because it's going to be paying out. Not the most high value share, but it's also likely to continue paying. And I'll sell one of these. And take a PRR market share. And I'm done for the stock round. So behind boy in terms of share density, um, he was able to take advantage of some of my cheap CNO shares. And I will pass going last in priority here. So we'll see how this develops. That was kind of aggressive play, play from me, um, but might be worthwhile in the long term. You know, gets the Philadelphia track lay, lays that uh, what I would say is the correct way. We see a lot of people kind of neuter themselves by trying to play keep away with the Lancaster. Um, but if you don't leave them a city there, you will not be able to run into New York. He does token that. That's a risky token. There's no guarantee that uh, he's going to have the option of laying that brown track. And by doing so, I have the ability to get down into Lancaster with the CNO. So probably will not need to um, use the DNH ability with the CNO. This does make the BNO uh, run very well right now but its long-term potential is really pretty poor, I think. Uh, it could get lucky with a run into New York, but it's you know impossible for anybody to predict that this far in advance. Um, so we may be seeing a dump here. Let's see, is he a priority? He will be operating ahead of JGB. So JGGB may be punished for um, his reliance on the B&O, and I think that player really should have sold out. Erwin is doing a lot of thinking here. 
uh, decides to keep the token for now. Probably thought that was a little too risky. And he will buy the three. PRR upgrades Lancaster. That's great. Probably will not be laying that in a way that is friendly to the NYC, but he does want to cooperate with the North a little bit. I mean, he is running the NYNH. So the question is, as the um, CNO player, do I give him the opportunity of laying the number two tile? Um, NYNH could try and run down there for a token into um, Lancaster. He may upgrade New York and try that anyway. Um, so I guess one downside here is that I uh, have the NYNH operating after the CNO now. And as a result of that, the uh, I will not have an opportunity to see what his strategy is here. I could buy the three and the four, but I'm just going to buy the three. And hopefully the NYNH will do the dirty work of um, buying that four to mess with the CNO a little bit. So I have cash now for the DNH, should I want to use it. NYNH probably will not be laying friendly track for me. Um, that's why I didn't lay towards New Haven. I don't want to you know, waste a track lay by relying on that. But I do think laying towards uh, Albany is better for the NYNH in general. Um, so it's not like he's only hurting me by laying track like this. Um, it also is not in his best interest, really, either. No option but to buy the four or shuffle trains from the PRR. Could see that. I think that would be very nice to the B&O. Um, B&O does have a three train now, so it won't be falling back, but really don't want this player to be running four trains. He would probably have to token to do it. This track does give me an opportunity to have a run with the NYC. Um, if I had laid a sharp to New Haven, but um, I'm definitely not going to be doing that. Uh, I'll be racing towards Reading and Allentown, I think. That said, PR is going to be operating for the NYC, um, and he's almost certainly going to not be playing friendly. So he does brush the twos, which is nice to see. Oh, he's taking it back. He's rethinking things. I mean, you got to rust the twos here. He did, and he leaves the NYNH with zero dollars. So maybe hoping to sell out of this company um, in the next stock round. That will put it brown. Um, and I do have a weakness for <laughs> cheap shares. So we'll see. B&O going to be heading up towards Lancaster with Alacrity. Probably the PRR player is going to be laying Lancaster, so or uh, laying Redding. So I may get blocked by the B&O player since he was smart and didn't lay his token here. However, I have to imagine that one of these players is going to be willing to sell out of their shares here. Um, which would change operating order a little bit, but not going to be enough to allow the CNO to operate before the BNO. So CNO is going to be tokened out. That is pretty unfortunate for uh, me. Both the CNO and the NYC are going to be looking for friends and not finding too much. That's a helpful track for the DNH player, which is me, of course. So I think that I will probably be having to avail myself of that. So the PRR was thinking about buying a train there, but ultimately just runs out, uh, runs his train and pays out. So NYC um, didn't get any help from the NYNH. Could lay down into New York, um, but is looking to help the CNO mostly. Um, CNO doesn't have permanent train money and uh, is going to be tokened out of Lancaster. So I probably will have to withgo a run on the NYC, which is painful, um, and lay towards Scranton. Um, I just want to make sure that there will be a X tile 
there will be. Um, and as a result, I'll be falling back into the yellow, which again is fine with me. So C and O now will be doing the D and H, and we'll have two runs as a result. We'll take that token. Unfortunately, it's my $40 token, so not the best value there, but we'll be running a little bit better as a result. We'll pay that. Otherwise, I don't have any money for the next stock round. And NY and H now. NY and H is basically um, committed to running into the B&M now as a result of his unfriendly New Haven tile. Is he going to be looking to mess around and shuffle trains out of the PRR? Probably not. So the game will probably slow down a little bit here. Um, one of the B&O players may be looking to sell down and start a company, but they don't have great companies to start. The B&M is probably their best choice. Um, but the B&M is not going to be able to get into Albany. I'll make sure of that. And um, we'll have to lay the Providence tile. NY North is going to be a little bit lackluster, um, you know, as being tokened out with the Scranton and Albany tiles occupied. See, this is what I'm talking about. The NY and H, um, you know, didn't want to help the NYC, which is fair enough, but he is running for, you know, garbage as a result of that track lay. Irwin has some cash to invest here. Will he sell out of the B&O? Doesn't have much money, has no permanent trains. Will be train locked when the fives break. So very reasonable to do that. Um, and that would also prevent JJB from buying any of his privates. I think JJB is probably going to lose this game. Um, you know, he's putting himself at the mercy of other players. Irwin buying paying shares. Do we see JJB then sell out? I would like to see that. It's going to be a little bit of a slow game if he just sits on these B&O shares. B&O does have th two trains, so it will run pretty hot. Um, if he sells out, I may be looking to snap up one of those shares. Also buying NY and H. If you're going to buy a yellow share, why buy the NY and H? It's only running for 50. If nobody's starting the B&M, it's not going to be running very well. Boy, probably my closest competitor right now. Um, not in terms of net worth. I am behind in net worth, but just in terms of decision making and my my, my fear of my... Uh, Fellow players, um, be curious to see what he decides to do here. He does have a share lead, um, which is going to be growing as he has a little bit more cash than me. Could buy that cheap NY and H share um, just to try and get two shares down the road. Whereas if I buy a more expensive share, I'm only going to be limited to one share potentially. So he's selling my CNO shares. Hurts my net worth a little bit, but again, market shares, yellow shares, the more the merrier. Um, and what is he looking to do? Is he debating selling out of the NY and H and hoping to par a third company? If he could get the B&M, that would be um, pretty dangerous. Because then he's incentivized to lay friendly track for the NY and H. Um, and both of those companies can run pretty well, at least in the mid game. So he's buying my market share. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Um, I will buy his market share. I'm at no risk for a dump there. And it will leave me money for a, another share, $78 or 88 I expect my CNO shares will be selling here. Instead, Irwin is buying his B&O. That's interesting. I don't know how this B&O company has stayed uh, split like this into, what are we in, stock round four? This should have been sold a long time ago. JJB has one share in all of the companies, so he is just spreading his money a little bit. Boy now buys a PRR. PRR has one train. 
I will buy my own market share at a CNO, ensure my presidency, and uh, hopefully take advantage of a higher revenue than the PRR would offer. So I'm going to be passing for the rest of the stock round. Boy, in theory, has two stock purchases left. Um, and I may be able to leave with priority here. If not, I'll be going second because JJB will probably be going last if Boy doesn't. But this may be Boy. This may be JJB's last um, action. He's passing. Um, Boy, I think that sitting on 130 is kind of heartbreaking here for him. I imagine he'll be. Oh, so he does pass. Um, that's pretty crazy. So I will be going last in priority. I'm not at risk for any dumps and I have no other actions that I want to take. So happy to see my competitors um, sitting on money, whatever. Um, not wrong to value priority, not at all. I'm not criticizing that. Um, but hey, uh, they pay a cost to do it. So I am fully vested. Baltimore, probably going to be getting into Lancaster and tokening. Um, does still have to worry about me coming over with the CNO a little bit. Actually, doesn't have money for a token. I missed that. Um, so I did, I could have competed for that Lancaster spot with him. Um, I still can, and I will. <laughs> um, so I'm happy to get the Scranton and the Lancaster spots. That's fine with me. And he can't do anything about it unless he withholds. He pays out for 240, so that is a lot of money. PRR. Is he going to upgrade New York here? It's tempting. It does increase his run a little bit. Actually, no, it doesn't. He can run from Philadelphia into Lancaster and Baltimore. So probably should not be spending money to upgrade New York. And he's going to pass. So unwilling to lay the Pittsburgh tile, knowing that I'm going to be heading down there. So I think that I get a token into Lancaster with the CNO and then token Scranton with the New York. Um, and I will feel pretty good about my track potential in the long term. That does leave the Albany open, but with Scranton tokened um, and the Reading and Allentown laid the way it is, uh, I'm not overly concerned about that. I may be able to prevent uh, other companies from running through Albany into New York. Who is going to be starting this B&M? Irwin has priority, so may see him doing that. At least it's not the NYNH player. He does upgrade New York, which is helpful because I imagine that I will be um, able to run into that in the next operating round, not this one. He is taking it back, so just thinking about his actions. ends up not laying New York. So with the CNO, now that I realize that I can get into Lancaster, I'm going to start building down there. Um, leaves me almost enough money, but with the token I, or with the private income, I will get that money. And I will start getting into Scranton now. And I still just have the three train. First run for the New York. And then I'll be looking to upgrade this tile in my next operation to get a run into New York. Of course, he's not going to upgrade that potentially. Um, but when he does, when someone does, it will um, be helpful. I'll also be able to start building towards Pittsburgh through Scranton um, in the future. NYC still has tokens, um, so the CNO potentially could get tokened out. But you know, with Scranton and Lancaster tokens, what more map control do I need with the CNO? Can always lay this $120 token in the late game if needed for a better run. So I am in a little bit of a perilous position in terms of you know permanent train money, but I like my map position and I don't know that the players I'm competing against are in much better positions. Uh, the BO certainly isn't. Uh, and the NYNH is in kind of a dangerous position. It looks like he's trying to 
yellow that company um, or yellow strategy that company which is fine um, but I am going to just kind of pay out this stock round and hopefully see some recovery in my net worth as a result upgrading Washington just to increase this run I am a little bit concerned by the amount that the B&O is running through running for um, they are making a lot of money JJB is sitting on 400 bucks um, so I'm hoping that we see Irwin dump this company on JJB and start his own company because even if you have a ton of cash going into the stock round if you don't have good companies to use it on it ends up being you know not too exciting so I hope that my token on Lancaster will convince uh, Irwin to dump that company PRR even though he sees I'm coming into Pittsburgh just really <laughs> not happy to uh, cooperate with me he uh, is holding a grudge I think from me trashing that NYNH so you know 18xx is not a negotiation game but you do have to think about you know the people you're playing with they aren't robots um, you can piss people off and <laughs> suffer their wrath through the rest of the game as a result so I think that's a little bit of what I'm seeing here uh, anyway, CNO doesn't really care that much. Will be getting into Lancaster, dropping that token, and now has a better run for its second three train. So I will be running much better now. Makes me feel better about that nasty uh, B&O run that I've been watching happen. NYNH will be upgrading into the NY now. Still not running super hot with the NYC, but that's okay. Um, has permanent train money, has good track, and I'm not pointing a target on my back with the NYC, so hopefully other people won't be buying those shares and trashing them. So this is pretty good track for me now. Um, I'm happy with the way things have developed. Just a little bit scared about these runs out of the B&O. Irwin and JB, as a result of these high-value runs, are um, pulling ahead in terms of net worth. I am last in net worth. It is still fairly early in the game. Um, we are, I mean, we're solidly into the mid game, but uh, a $400 deficit at the mid game is not the end of the world, but it's also not nothing. I do have to be careful that I don't um, withhold so much and try and be clever with yellow strategies, that type of thing, that I don't let them develop an insurmountable lead. We are into the next stock round. The NYNH has withheld into brown. We are not playing the variant where you. Um, can buy multiple shares out of the IPO, so won't be seeing that, um, which is A-OK -okay with me. Irwin is buying an NYC, so despite running for only 60, I have somehow um, convinced players to buy my company. JB has a thousand dollars cash um, as a result of finally sharing out, selling out of the B&O, and he will be taking the B&M. I think the B&M is a bad company in this game um, in general, and I think with the track developing the way it has, um, probably not a great company uh, in this game in particular. It does have the option of a Albany token, but where is it going from Albany? Uh, don't anticipate it getting into Rochester. Um, Erie will eventually take that, and is certainly not getting through Scanton. So we'll see what he gets with that. What is going on with the CPR in this game? CPR is a valuable um, or viable suitcase right now, and the Champagne in St. Lawrence is controlled by JJB. So he has $1,000 cash, could easily be seeing him float uh, two companies this OR, including the CPR, and then just pushing trains into the fives and uh, you know securing himself a suitcase. Not the end of the world if he does that, in my opinion, um, because the CPR, if he chooses suitcase, it will have sucked up you know 600 bucks, 500 bucks of his um, massive amount of liquidity that he entered the stock round with. But if two companies do float here, um, I am a little bit worried about the train rush. Boy could be looking to sell down shares and float a company. Probably would be looking at the Erie. The Erie doesn't have much synergy at this point with any of the companies, um, but he may be mulling that thought over. I myself am not going to be floating another company this stock round. Um, we'll just be buying paying shares and we'll see if I'm able to get a final company in the next stock round or not. I imagine I'll just be running two companies this game. 
and in terms of shares that I'm looking to buy, I could buy my last CNO, probably will buy that first, and then maybe looking towards the BNO for a share at least. Boy selling my NYC down. NYC is um, not losing value as a result of that, but it is um, closer to the ledge. He is selling the PRR as well, and looks like he is going to be floating the company. So will he take that CPR? Um, probably should not. I would not trust JJB, um, but I wouldn't really be super eager to take the Erie either. He has managed to get uh, 540, so we'll be able to par or float for $90. So I am in a little bit of trouble here. Um, they are going to be able to buy into the fives pretty easily, and uh, there is, you know, enough company cash in the game that we could be seeing a six come out um, pretty aggressively, which would be unfortunate for me. If I can't get a five, uh, at least one five, uh, my game is over. I will go bankrupt. So boy is just really floundering here. Um, trying to figure out exactly what order he should do things in. And looks like he'll be taking the Erie, not the CPR. So it does leave the CPR available at the JJB. We will probably be seeing three companies float here. I may be looking at a bankruptcy for myself, um, which is ironic for the first uh, streamed game that I will be posting. So JJB should probably be looking at trashing everybody's shares here. Um, in order to ensure that if there is a bankruptcy, he wins. So people are looking at that CNO, seeing it as a sick company with, um, you know, <laughs> imminent need of a sick strain at least, um, and are fleeing, jumping, jumping overboards. Fortunately, JJB is not going to have the opportunity to float two companies here. So I'm hoping that these players uh, kind of stall and are not eager to buy into the fives um, in this very first operating round. So hopefully I can get at least one withhold on that CNO. And I need to be careful with my investment to pick shares that are going to be paying out. Otherwise, um, I may regret my decision to invest this cash instead of just sitting on it. Unfortunately, because they're parring so high and my companies are here at the ledge, I'm not going to be able to manipulate turn order at all to um, prevent them from operating first. NYNH has a four train, so we'll be around at least until the Ds, um, which puts it in a better position than the CNO. One thing I'll say is that these players need to be aware that if they all force trains, I may be going bankrupt. So whoever is not in the lead here, um, it's not in their interest to do that because they'll lose if I go bankrupt and they're not um, ahead in net worth. So we may see some tension between these companies, um, you know, in terms of really pushing trains at full throttle as a result. Buying a PRR share is safe here. Um, I don't think that we will see a withhold, so that should be fairly safe revenue for me. I don't think that we'll see the six train come out before the PRR operates, so it should be running. So I'll buy that. Is there any sense in me trying to manipulate turn order here in terms of who goes first, the CPR or the B&M? I probably want the B&M to go first. He doesn't have another company um, to shuffle money into. But I don't know that I have a strong, strong preference, at least not strong enough to really get involved in, you know, taking these shares. I may leave that responsibility up to Boy, but it looks like he's just going to be floating. So I will be in the position to buy shares, paying shares here, and Will Irwin be paying out? Irwin has the CPR, um, which will be a suitcase, because it's going to be operating before the B&M, right? So if the B&M operates first, he can break that suitcase. 
I'm just wondering if it's safe for me to invest in the B&O or if that's going to be a withhold. I will take one share out of there. He will own 90% of that company as a result. So I think it still is a safe withhold or a safe payout. And I'll be passing for the rest of the stock round. This puts me at 15 shares. Boy is going to be um, exceeding me in absolute share count, but he will have a significant percentage of that not paying, at least for the first OR, as a result of starting the Erie. And unfortunately, uh, because JJB has so much cash, I probably will still be unable to get priority into the next stock round. This is assuming, of course, that I don't go, just go bankrupt, which could very well happen. Erie is the last company to float. And JJB has sold a ton of companies here, so maybe, you know, having trouble finding places to put his cash. But happy to buy my market share, of all things. <laughs> Irwin out of cash now. If he sold the CPR... Um, and then bought and sold the BM, he would manipulate the turn order that way. But he's probably happy to operate after the B&M, assuming that the B&M is going to have to buy a 4 for him, and then he can buy into the 5s. So if things stay they are, B&M buys a 4 and a 5. Oh, no. So there's two 4s. Okay, well, that makes me feel a little bit better. If there was one 4, the B&M would buy a 4 and a 5, and the CPR would buy both 5s, um, leaving the Erie to buy the 6. So that would be um, game over for me, almost certainly. Boy is getting his orange shares or his brown shares. That makes me feel a little more confident that he will be paying out. JJB will be doing a little stock trashing here. So if he gets high enough ahead of Irwin, um, he's going to be hoping to push trains and win on a bankruptcy. But that does make Irwin a little bit hesitant to push trains as much. So, you know, there's a trade-off there. I'm just really hoping that we see a stall on a, on a Poison 5, Poison 4, at least for the first operating round. I think there's a chance for me in the game if, there, if there's a stall. If there's not a stall, then I think I lose. JJB, is he going to continue to buy the CPR and trash it? If he sells it down twice, it will operate after the B&O, um, which will allow it to shuffle money. Looks like he didn't do that, so Boy will have priority. Boy has no option to dump on me as a, as a small benefit, um, but we will see how this goes. So B&O will not have access to the Philadelphia token or track as a result of the five trains coming out after it operates. So hopefully I'll be able to snag that with the CNO. His run is a little bit worse as a result of my Lancaster token, so you're welcome for that. And he's paying out, good. So I'm glad to see him pay out. That does give me a little more cash um, to hopefully survive a train rush. It would be painful for me if he withheld that um, because I would be falling back on that stock value and also losing out on a potential source of revenue. So always uh, a little bit risky to invest in other people's companies because you need to ensure that they're going to be paying out. B&M happy to lay the Providence track for NYC or the NYNH. reconsidering its decision. So if we don't see a bankruptcy in this in this set of operating rounds, I think uh, JB has lost the game. He'll be running solely the B&M, um, which has very limited potentials. He's able to buy in his privates, which is good for him, but you know, what shares can he safely invest in? It's going to be like a glorified investor for the rest of the game. 
Okay, so Bison is Privates does not lay the track, um, so being a little bit um, spiteful to the NYNH. And the first operation from Irwin, Irwin may be looking to shuffle trains out of the BNO and then get a permanent train into the BNO. But, you know, as long as we don't see these trains, um, you know, flying off of the market, I'm happy. Uh, happy to sit on my three trains and, you know, withhold on the CNO and hopefully survive uh, this uh, little crunch here. So going to be running this as a suitcase. B&M, for some reason, is allowing this. And he's debating whether or not to buy the 4 and the 5. Looks like he is going to be shuffling all the cash over into the BNO. So this is exactly what I was hoping to see. Um, you know, none of the players are pushing trains, and uh, this is going to breathe some life into the CNO for me. Erie uh, does have the option of buying that four and five, and has the money in the PRR to buy a five as well. But unfortunately for him, the PRR is operating first. So if the Erie pulls, um, you know, on the four and the five. It's going to come around back to the BNO and the BNM, so the Erie, uh, the PRR may not be able to secure it itself of five train. He doesn't care that much. I mean, he'll have permanent trains in both companies regardless. Um, but if his goal is to get a cheap permanent, then uh, he won't be able to accomplish that. So we may see the PRR buying the first six in this game. But that means the NYC will end up with a 5, and the CNO will be 200 bucks closer to the 6. Um, so I may be able to survive a bankruptcy. Now the question is, will I have to sell so many shares that I'm eliminated from the game? Um, potentially. <laughs> that is a real fear. Um, hopefully not, though. Of course, the B&O player has enough money for a five and a, does he have enough money for a five and a six? Yes, he does. Um, so he may be buying the six as a result. Well, it'll be interesting no matter what happens. Looks like the CNO may be on the hook for a D train, um, which will bankrupt me. So the question is, if he buys the 4 and the 5 here, um, I think if he buys anything, he has to buy the 4 and the 5, not just the 4. Um, but by doing this, he may um, lose himself the game, right? Uh, he's not ahead in net worth, and if I bankrupt, uh, either JB or Irwin should be able to take it. So kind of up to him whether or not he wants to just let the game go on for another operating round and just uh, wait until the next operating round to buy his first trains. I mean, the, the longer we go without the uh, train rush really kicking off, the better it is for me, so... I'm just sitting here waiting to see if he decides to do it or not. PRR has a three train. Um, so, you know, if the sixes get bought out, you know, if he buys a four and a five, I buy a five. The B and O buys a five and a six. The B and M buys a six. Um, then he will be on the hook for a D, and he will be eliminating himself potentially. So kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. This gives me the first, uh, you know, brown tile. So I will be securing my run into New York. And I will, unfortunately, yes, okay. So I can optimize my run a little bit here. And so I have to hit that dit. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate, but I should still be running for a little bit more. 210 at least, okay. Pay, uh, well, we'll be withholding that, I think. Um, 
payout versus withhold. It gets me an extra buck, I guess. And JJB will get some cash. If I withhold it, um, it's 21 more dollars. I don't think it matters. Um, I will pay out. And then I will take this track here to um, neuter the NYNH. Even though I am looking like I'm in trouble, I do not want to, um, you know, give people an easy out of this game. So I'll pay this out and I'll buy. So if I don't buy a five here, do the sixes still come out? B and O buys both fives then, and B and M withholds and buys a six. So yeah, I will definitely be buying a five here. Um, actually, so if I let me see here. If I withhold on the C and O, it will operate after the NYNH, uh, NYC, which will give me another run. So let me unfortunately do that. Sorry, guys. Withhold that, and then we will do this. And submit that and pay that out. So now the NYC will be getting a run before the CNO. If I looked at that correctly, it did. Okay. So who knows if that'll make a difference or not. But we are in dire straits here at Track Talk. Track Talk. <laughs> he withheld, which is unfortunate for me, who would um, take every buck I can possibly get. So that costs me $15, or actually $25, I think, um, of net worth. It's pretty tenuous of whether or not I'll go bankrupt if I'm forced to buy a D-Train. Um, But uh, we only have one more operating round, so I can buy the five out of the NYC and, uh, you know, get an extra operating round of income to buy the D train before I have to. So I don't know if I'll go bankrupt here. I may just shuffle trains and see what happens in the next operating round. B&O has the money to buy the six. Imagine we'll see him do that. He um, is ahead, um, so no reason not to. Oh, silly me. Um, he is not able to buy the six as a result of his train limit. So that is a blessing. Um, B&M could potentially buy the six, and then PRR will get the second six, so I'm not safe. Um, but we will see if the PRR wants to do that. He loses if the six uh, if I go bankrupt, so he may be happy to sit on trains too. Let's see. He unfortunately doesn't have to withhold to do it. I think that would make it um, a you know, less straightforward decision. He actually will get it just by paying out. So he does buy it. That puts me under a ton of pressure. Uh, B&M will have to withhold to buy a six, and he will lose if I go bankrupt. So maybe he's thinking that he doesn't do it. So he runs for 60, which is unfortunately just enough to do it. Oh, so, well, if he does that, he may not have enough money to withhold and do it, which would be really awesome for me. Uh, so he's second guessing that now. He does spend uh, the track cost still though. It's actually more expensive. So he's looking at baking, breaking the CPR suitcase. Um, so I may get, uh, lucky here. 
that would be really awesome if I did not bankrupt in my first upload. <laughs> well, awesome. Um, so I may have a chance in this game still. I, I mean, so what I'll say about this is that I think that is the right play for JJB. Like, if you lose the game when someone else bankrupts, you probably should not go out of your way to bankrupt them. Um, so I'm not you know, going to criticize that play. I think there are other things in this game to criticize him for, but I think that particular play is um, reasonable and not something to, you know, be upset about. I'm sure the other players might be upset about it, particularly Irwin. <laughs> because if this game goes long, I think that uh, it comes down to me and Boy, and Boy has brown shares, certainly, um, but you have to also look at how valuable the share is going to be. Um, if the NYC, if the NYNH is only running for, you know, 200 bucks, 180 bucks or whatever, um, then there's a chance for me to come back into it. So uh, amazingly, I will be um, getting a six train instead of going bankrupt, um, which is pretty excellent. So... I guess I look to upgrade Scranton just to improve my run a little bit. Submit that, pay that out, I think, here. And now I unfortunately am forced to sell out. So I sell shares to raise 169 and that will leave me basically without cash to buy shares so i'm still in a pretty rough spot um that is not great but i will sell shares that um, have already operated so that will be the prr and the prr is not going to lose any value by me doing that so i'll sell one and then if i sell a nyc share i do make it vulnerable to a takeover in theory um, but that would give me exactly what I need. So that would probably be best. Probably best there. The odds of one player getting all five of these shares, or, you know, at least four of them, seems low. So I think we'll do that. And then we buy the six. So, um, you know, in my commentary, I'll often say this player is eliminated and has sold himself out of the game. And, you know, I'm frankly not that far off from that position myself here. Um, it's not a great spot to be in. Um, I have no money to buy stocks in the next stock round. So all the players will have a fairly large share advantage on me. The only saving grace here is that the B&O will be bringing out the D train I assume, in the next operating round, um, which will put Boy and JB under a lot of pressure. So the B&O does not have a D-train run, and um, it's not going to be able to take advantage of that train very much. And that may be my way to get back into this game. We'll see. But it's going to be a boring stock round, that's for sure. <laughs> So JJB has the most cash going into it. Boy, as a result of his withholds, doesn't have a lot of cash. He does have a five share limit or five share advantage on me already. Um, so every share he's buying is going to be, you know, pretty disastrous for me. Um, but we will see, um, you know, if that's surmountable or not. I think that my position in this game is very poor right now. Uh, I think that should be obvious, you know, for anybody watching. Um, but I didn't go bankrupt, and it's not over until the D trains come out at least, because that has a chance to shake things up. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, Irwin uh, will push trains now that uh, no one is at risk of going bankrupt. So he's committing to this suitcase. Um, BM has demonstrated that it is eager to break it, but it will take three. Uh, 
operations to get there. So CPR will not need a train until the OR um, 6.3 at the earliest. Erwin is buying my CNO shares. They are yellow. Um, they will not be staying yellow. I am at no danger of hitting my cert limit, and I need every drop of cash that I can possibly get. But it will allow him to potentially exceed his cert limit in this stock round, not that he has the cash to do so. CNO also has pretty good track, so may just be looking for well-paying shares. JJB has a bunch of cash. Unfortunately, the two players behind me in priority have the most cash, so I will be going, if not second to last, um, third to last. No, no chance of me getting priority in the um, next stock round. Everybody's buying my CNO shares. Um, that's fine. I couldn't buy them anyways. Boy, pretty poor now. Probably will be looking at the last CNO share. I could probably turn on auto pass here. Um, I think that in general, um, auto pass is okay, um, but it does kind of, you know, transmit to the other players your intentions. So, in this case, there's really no doubt that I'll be passing. Um, but I'm also just watching the screen. Um, in real time, so there's not much time saving to me do it to me doing it. Um, but I, in, for instance, in asynchronous games, I am always quite leery of the auto pass because you always want to, you know, have the other players guessing, even if they think that it's, you know, most likely that you're going to pass. Um, you will force them to make a decision without that information. If you uh, turn on auto pass and they take their action and then they see that you just pass right away, they can quickly undo their action and you know have that information to help them plan. CNO is sold out, so we'll be floating up, which, you know, I'm not gonna be able to yell at this company, so get me, you know, onto this higher ledge as opposed to being stuck at 69. I won't say no to that. Not that I could have done anything to prevent it. Um, the only thing I'm worried about here is someone trying to steal the uh, NYC. It will be very difficult for me to defend that because if I sell out of the CNO, um, that starts becoming vulnerable. However, players may be looking to buy those shares now. So hopefully we will not see someone manage to get five of them. JJB would be the one to do it. Um, and he does have the cash for it. We'll see if he's going to push me for it. If I have to, I will sell um, probably the PRR to defend the NYC. But I would love not to do that. PRR's ledge, so I won't even hurt his net worth. JJB going to be floating the NYNH up. I like that. Uh, makes it harder to stay brown. Uh, it's also a company that looks like it's going to be withholding, so it doesn't help JJB that much. Erwin, still looking for paying shares, buys an NYC, so this means I'm safe. Nobody's going to be um, stealing this company for me in this stock round. Um, they could collude with one another, so if Erwin were to buy up all these shares, sell, sell them down to JJB individually, um, JJB could steal the presidency from me. But JJB and Erwin are you know, the closest competitors in net worth right now, so it doesn't really make any sense for them to collude in that manner. Doesn't rule it out, but it makes it unlikely. So I'm going to continue to pass. Does Erwin buy the third? Yes, he does. So that makes the NYC pretty unappealing in the sense that I have 40%, two other players at 30%. Both of these players are likely to be operating behind me in uh, priority. So this is not uh, a safe share for them to hold. Um, I could easily sell it down out of the NYC, leave it trainless, and uh, force them to buy a D train, uh, which I will have a low threshold to do if one of them is starting to run away with it. It will hurt me in the sense that the NYC uh, has great track, um, but if they are forced out of packet at D at an inconvenient time, then it probably is going to be worth it to do that. So I have 13 shares uh, compared to 20 from Boy, 17 from JJB. Um, definitely behind. Erwin is 
sitting with me at 14. So uh, I am in last place, but hopefully I can, you know, parlay some poor play from the other players into a come from behind victory. Can we see a upgrade here? He should be able to get it just with the payout. So this is great for me. Um, these four trains should be dying, and hopefully these players will sell down my NYC shares, um, and I will be able to buy them the next stock round and not have to dump that company. But, you know, probably should be looking towards the um, green track here. It's anticipating it's going to be running a D train, and will eventually want to run towards the west. Um, so I'm a little surprised to see it laying the track it is. It does allow it two runs into Philadelphia. Um, no, it doesn't, because it doesn't control Lancaster. So that track is not good. Um, and it does bring out the D, so that is excellent. B&M will be uh, forced to buy a D early in the stock round. Doesn't allow it to reap the rewards of the shares it purchased. Um, so JJB is in rough spot. The NYNH will also be on the hook for a D train. Um, he can just shuffle trains around if he wants. Um, and he can also withhold with the PRR and Erie in the stock round to get a lot more cash for it. So he's in a much better position. We may see Boy win this game. Um, but it's certainly <laughs> going to hurt it that it uh, the D train, D train rusted as early as it did. Um, so I love that. Would really like to see New York upgraded. Um, I don't have the cash to do it. And it looks like Boy is, um, you know, not willing to cooperate and, uh, and make that happen, which is a little bit annoying. Imagine we'll see him starting to withhold. He, is there anything that he can dump? He could dump the Erie on JJB. Um, you know, three ta three company dumps are a thing in 1830, so he could theoretically manufacture one, um, but that would probably bankrupt JJB, um, and boy would lose. But it will be an option for him. No, it will not be in the stock round as JJB is having priority. So he does pay it out. That's fine with me. I own some shares in the PRR, or a single share in the PRR, so happy to have a little money to my name again. <laughs> e &M doing the Lord's work and heading up to the CPR. Thank you for that, sir. So he is selling down my NYC shares, um, which I love. That gives me company money for upgrading New York um, at the end of the top partnering round. This is very painful for JJB. Um, if he hadn't played the way he had, I would have bankrupt in the last OR. Um, specifically, I'm referring to him not buying the six train. But uh, he didn't really have too many options there. Like I said, um, if he bankrupts me, he still loses. So what is he really going to do there? But this is um, devastating to his game. He's going to be sitting in this uh, set of three operating rounds, five shares below me, and I was saying already in the past that I was in a terrible position, so he's in an even worse position. He also is running the B&M with no, no uh, track, so that D train is never going to pay for it itself. Eerie, single train, no real track to speak of, can't even upgrade the double O. May see him starting to head over to Albany just to increase his run. Alternatively, could uh, try and loop back down to Pittsburgh, but it's going to take him a long time to get there. May just upgrade the double O on Dunkirk, yep, uh, just for that minor increase in cash um, as he's going to be buying a D train shortly here. So we really, th we really threaded the needle here um, in terms of uh, the train rush, but it looks like I will be, you know, potentially still in the running here. Almost getting that NYC money. And once we do that, my runs will be much healthier. I am leaving the B&M a little bit of an opportunity to get into uh, 
Albany, but that really is of no consequence at this point. So I'll just be trying to run for as much as I can this operating round and uh, hoping to get back in the game in the next stock round. C&O now. I think I kill the chances of the B&O from getting west here. Don't have the money to um, upgrade New York anyways. I have a six train and we'll be running that. I guess I can, well, thank the B&O for that stupid upgrade. And I'll pay that out. NY and H now. Does he shuffle trains or does he just outright buy the D here? Um, he has not done any withholding to prepare for a shuffle, um, so may just seem by the D. The NY and H does not have a D run, so it will be painful him painful for him to have that in the NY and H. He's gonna have to sell shares here, um, so he may be tempted to shuffle. But he just sells the NY and H. That's strange. Um, so who has priority? Because they're going to be uh, grabbing all those shares. JJB will be taking those then. Um, looks like he rethought that. Yeah, I mean, you have to not give away your brown company with a D-train in it. CNO can't catch a break. Um, will be sold down, it looks like. Well, this is wonderful. Um, everyone's share advantage has evaporated. I have two healthy companies, great track, and we will see if I can run them to victory now. Excellent. So B&O has two trains, but really doesn't have track to take advantage of it. We'll eventually be able to lay this $120 token um, tile, but I will be doing everything in my power to prevent it from you know, going anywhere to take advantage of its trains. Um, I'm also going to be looking to upgrade Albany to Brown to prevent him from ever getting into Pittsburgh. Um, so that looks like what he's heading to, but I'm going to prevent that. Uh, I am not in the business of helping players in the late game here. So I think that my odds in this game got a whole lot better. Um, I may have been a little bit overly pessimistic in terms of my outlook here. The CPR is going to be breaking the suitcase, um, courtesy of the B&M. He won't have to buy a train, but it will take one of the trains out of the B&O. Um, and my share um, deficit has, you know, turned into a share surplus compared to these two players. Irwin's still one share ahead of me, but that's basically a CPR share, which is a non-paying share. So this is coming up all, all daisies for me. PRR now does have a permanent train. Hopefully does not um, work in the B&O's interest and give it away into Pittsburgh. Um, that would be very frustrating. But it looks like he will be just passing, which is fine. And now we will have the B&M inching towards the CPR. This is um, impending doom for the uh, Irwin player. Not really. Uh, he has the trains for it, so it's not the end of the world. But uh, it does distract the B&M, which I love to see, not making any progress on working into Albany or, you know, over to Rochester, that kind of thing. So I think JJB is probably eliminated from the game at this point. <laughs> it's funny for me to say that after, you know, making excuses for myself and not saying that I'm eliminated. Uh, but I think that in retrospect, it will turn out that I was not eliminated, which is um, nice. So that will allow me to kill Pittsburgh for the B&O. And then next uh, OR, I can upgrade New York, which will help me um, greatly with the CNO and the NYC. It also helps the NYNH and the PRR. Uh, they are both owned by Boy, who is my nemesis, so to speak, in this game. And no, no personal hard feelings, just joking around. But um, he has played well, and uh, I think that he is probably my nearest competitor at this point. Um, so. Not ideal that I'll be paying that track cost, but um, if he's not willing to do it, I will. Erie going to be heading over to Albany. Um, so I will upgrade this Pittsburgh tile and kill the B&O's um, aspirations. And is there any better track that I can be running? So... New York, 
This is three, four, five, six. So I can't get into Chicago. Um, I am hitting a dit. Is there a way I do not need to hit the dit? Doesn't look like it. So I will stay where I am, loving these payouts. And Erie's last operation without a D train, or realistically without a five train, um, presumably will not be laying Burlington um, for the B&M will first force that company to use that track action. But let's see. And while he deliberates, um, just looking at the game state, Irwin is fairly far ahead of everyone um, and will have a yellow CPR, so does have an ability to get some um, share density on the rest of us. And that CPR is going to be a dog. I mean, it's not going to run for anything. Um, he is not going to be picking up the NYNH shares. That will presumably be JJB. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see if Erwin can take it. He does buy the five train, so he will have a run for the CPR the first time it operates. Um, but he may, not, he may withhold that run because uh, it will put the CPR into the brown. Um, the problem with that is that then someone could steal it. It actually wouldn't have put it in the brown, so it's relevant. I should look before I speak. You know, probably annoyed by me um, taking that Pittsburgh tile. I should have let him... Uh, lay that $120 track before I did this. Now he knows that uh, he doesn't have to go there. He can go um, to this track between Scranton and Lancaster as a result. But either way, I'm just trying to delay his track advancement as long as possible. So he does lay the track, not realizing that all three brown cities have been taken. Um, well, that's fine. This is the saddest D-run. <laughs> All right, it gets a little bit better there. PRR. PRR doesn't have a whole lot of track delay. Could be working on getting up to the Erie, I guess, but kind of limited. B&M, hopefully we'll be linking up the CPR. Be funny if he uh, actually didn't lay the Burlington track now. <laughs> now that the CPR has bought the train out of the B&O, you know, I, honestly, that's not an unreasonable move. He could upgrade Boston and force the CPR to lay that track. I mean, what's the CPR going to do? Not uh, not link up after he has done that. Upgrading New York here, and as a result, um, unfortunately doesn't help my run that much until it gets into brown. Erie probably be linking up with Albany and get a bigger run as a result. Hmm. So what's he hoping to do here? Is that a just misclick or is he actually going to be bypassing Albany? Maybe hoping to get into Boston for a little bit extra money. So I will try and mess that up for him um, with a track lay on this tile here. Not a whole lot of other track that the New York will be laying. Uh, this leaves the CNO um, free to upgrade New York here. Makes my run a little bit better, I hope. So. That is four trains, four tracks. So if I just reset here, um, I think that's the best I can do. Pay that out. Okay. First run of the CPR. He does only own 2% two two of that, or 20% of it. So not going to be making any money there. And at the end of this set of operating rounds, I am $700 behind Irwin, a share behind um, and he will be able to buy a lot of um, orange shares, so I need to be aware of that. Um, so it's going to come down to the late game here. Um, these last couple of runs are going to determine the game. Boy, hopefully will not be able to get his brown shares. Um, I hope that JJB buys those up.
CPR could withhold and hope to lay the $80 tile here um, and then hopefully we'll be running better in the future. So he is looking to cooperate with the B&M and the Erie in making this connection here. Um, I will do my best to put a wrench in that plan, but it's not going to be possible with just one track. I'll have to get a green tile there to fully block them. And even then, it's going to be challenging. NYNH operating through the um, upgraded New York tile now. And this is Track Talk recording again after the end of the game. The other players did elect to end the game and call it for Irwin after the sixth operating round. Um, I did think that this was a premature call. There's probably at least two operating rounds, maybe three left in this game, depending on uh, whether or not players try to bring out another D-train or... Um, you know, dump a company. It will be challenging for myself and Irwin to invest our cash here without leaving ourselves open to dumps. Um, so I think that there was uh, potential for shenanigans here, but uh, unfortunately the game was called. Uh, moving forward with these types of recordings in real time, um, we probably will do them occasionally, but not very commonly, just because the editing process for this type of video is much more uh, involved than for the other types of videos we've been creating. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed the recording and we will be back in the future.